It says it's preparing to live stream. All right. Well, we'll find out if we really are <laughs> later, I guess. Okay. So uh, welcome to all of you who have been in this Unblocked series. I've got my copy right here. And I like to say, you can tell this is my authentic copy because my rabbit um, during the photo shoot I was trying to do, there's a whole bunch of photo shoots we did, of course, around the book launch two years ago. Um, and she kept jumping up and nibbling on the pages. Um, no respect, let me tell you. No respect from the rabbit. Um, that is one of her favorite snacks, is your favorite book. So uh, we have done chakra one and chakra two. And now today we are in chakra three. There was also an, an additional extra bonus call that we did last week that was for coaches about reading your client's chakras. So if you missed that and you're interested in that and using this work to help other people, you can still get the recording of that. If you're not a coach, but you think you might want to be one someday, okay, you can still listen along, right? We don't exclude people. So um, today we're going to talk about third chakra. And I just want to start by saying um, hello to assuming we're also streaming on YouTube. Um, this is Margaret Lynn Ternary, the author of Unblocked. And we are today talking about the third in the series. So if you're joining us there, um, let's see, I'm going to go to speaker view. If you are joining us there, then um, you can also get this series. We'll put some links for you over there in Facebook. Okay. So I want to start by um, jumping in and reminding you guys that we are building chakra by chakra. And so the third chakra doesn't just appear, it builds on the first chakra and the second chakra. And this is where some of the problems come in. And so, uh, but the third chakra is so different because it's where we come out into the world with things, where people can actually see us and evaluate us. And I'm gonna talk about that a lot. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit, a bit actually from page 119 in Unblocked, um, where I talk about how the first, second, and third chakras are interdependent. When a first chakra that is full and flowing tells us that without a doubt, we are intrinsically deserving and have the right to pursue, to go after what we want, to have what we want, then our second chakra passion, our fuel for action fills with energy. Like, yes, I really do want that because I deserve it. So now I feel that impulse and it rises into our third chakra action center with the charge to push through any potential risks and go for it. We boldly go for what we want with our words, with our actions. Um, but when a blocked first chakra, when the first chakra is full of fear, what says, um, no, I don't really, do I deserve though? I think I do. I don't know if I deserve yet. When that first chakra is running the show, it's always saying, no, no, no. The risk is too high. And how does it tell us that mentally in our mind? Give me an answer on the chat. How does our first chakra tell us the risk is too high? What does it do in our body to tell us? Yeah, yeah, fear. And so it tells us through our nervous system Sometimes we're aware of it, sometimes we aren't. Sometimes when, when fear goes through our nervous system, we instantaneously turn it into lots and lots of thinking and spinning, but it tells us through our nervous system. So when the first chakra says the risk is too high, remember when our, our physiology is hijacked by all that fear, yeah, you guys got it. Then our second chakra is being bypassed. There's no, no time for passion right now. No time for like, oh, I think I deserve this. This is too dangerous. And so we bypass the second chakra. And it is basically saying for me to go there is not safe. Um, second chakra pass, uh, passions are bypassed, are stymied. And the third chakra energy 
which is supposed to take the second chakra passion and run with it, has nowhere to go. It gets stuck. The only thing we can do is avoid, procrastinate, um, or stay doing activities that are within our comfort zone, right? And that's where I mentioned here that fabulous Bill Murray movie, Groundhog Day, where you wake up and it feels like I'm living the same day over and over and nothing is really changing. And this is what makes the third chakra such a challenge for coaches, because you can do tons and tons of healing work or tons and tons of strategy or tons and tons of investing in yourself and not actually change the behaviors. So, so this is where things really like rubber meets the road. So, you know, it's also interesting. Here we are on um, MLK Day, right? And it's like first chakra is building on those basic human rights. Do I have the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of justice? And at the second chakra, I have the right. I claim the right in myself based on that first chakra. I have the right to want things to desire things, to have a charge to go after things. But at the third chakra, we claim those rights in action and in word, right? We show up and say, yes, I'm acting on my right to be here, to do this, to say no, to speak up, to advocate for myself. And so we really are talking about how rights build on rights. But if we don't have that intrinsic belief, that intrinsic right, then it's going to feel too scary to say, I'm taking my place at the table, right? To step up and step in. And so when I was young in corporate America back in 1990, um, you know, for uh, especially in the engineering field, for a woman to uh, be so bold as to say, well, I think that's wrong. It's like the whole table would stop and look at you like, thought you were here to take the notes, right? And so to act on, though as if I have the right, is what happens at the third chakra. It would be me saying, um, excuse me, but I disagree with that. Or no, I don't want to be treated that way. And so it turns into at the third chakra, setting boundaries or acting on our impulses, right? Acting on our impulses. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back. I went to speaker view and I switched back. So you can double check me on that, Bethany. It's to see that I'm the one on speaker view. I didn't wanna put anyone else on speaker view, <laughs> okay? I'm just gonna assume that's working. Um, so at the third chakra, here comes the problem, right? Here comes the problem is that once I uh, things arrive at the third chakra, I am going to be seen and evaluated by other people, right? And remember, third chakra is also like ego, right? When we read all the books, it's like, it's your ego development. Um, and so I'm going to be seen, I'm going to be evaluated as someone who right? And so if any of you relate to me um, being in corporate America, you know, as a, as a young woman, whenever that was for you, and imagining whether it was yourself or seeing another woman really push back, really set a boundary, um, really get maybe angry or testy, and notice what happened. They were evaluated and pigeonholed or named as someone who, right, she's a fill in the blank. And so um, it'll, it's either someone who um, thinks that they have the right to say that, right? Or someone who the fact that they did that, the fact that they want that is bad in some way, is shameful in some way, is, you know, some word that is supposed to shame. And we all get the mirror neurons from that, right? It's like, I'm never going to be that person. I'm always going to be agreeable. 
all right, Janet named it, right? I'm going to be the one who's agreeable because I see what happens when you are not. So um, remember that as we think about third chakra and moving into what is really our highest leadership energy, I am manifesting my life with my words, my actions, right? And instead, I have to wrangle with very unconsciously often through my nervous system in this place, what are the rules? And am I deserving here now that I've stepped into a, um, a company, a church, a community, a country, a group of people? Do what are the first chakra rules here say about what I have the right to have? right? What do the rules say here about how I will be judged? Yeah, the who do you think you are, which means it never means positive, right? It's like they're not waiting for you to say amazing, right? They're, they're waiting for you to say to be shamed and say like, oh, like I am getting in those words that what I have just done, that I have acted on this impulse as if I think I have the right to do that as if I think I deserve to take that action as if um, I think that it is okay to even want that. Now, this comes up huge around money, doesn't it? I don't want to be seen if I were to, to make an offer and it's higher and I made it in front of a bunch of people or someone in my family said, how much are you charging? And I just doubled my rates. They might look at me like, wow, you think you can deserve that? Or the shame of, well, aren't you greedy, right? And so third chakra means I'm going to be seen and evaluated. And I'm going to be seen and evaluated based on the first chakra set points because at the first chakra whether it's the the room you're stepping into or it's the tribe the family the original tribe that you came from they there are set points of how safe it is to be some people just seen right sometimes we learn it wasn't safe at all to be seen never mind seen as um, wanting something, because sometimes we get shamed for that, or being seen as thinking you have the right to ask or to take that action. Um, and so thinking you have the right to ask for more. How was that allowed? in your childhood? How is that allowed in jobs that you've worked in? How is that, does that feel allowed when you look out into the world today in this areas that you want more in? Um, thinking you have the right to say no, say no. Thinking you have the right to set a boundary with someone, to have that hard conversation to say, um, no, I'm sorry, these last three interactions, like these, this, this is not okay for me. You can't treat me this way. Um, thinking you have the right to go for what you want, like literally in a real way in the real world. And so everything that we want to create and manifest and have by is going to come through and with other people through and with other people right so you know that's always our joke in the coaching world is it's like i want all these clients and then when it comes down to it it's like but i don't really like people i'm scared of them it's like wait <laughs> the aren't the people that you want to work with wait people Right. And so we, they, it is going to come through and with other people. And that, that question is, what will they think of me? What will they do to me? 
So for some people at their first chakra, the alarm bell that goes off, thinking about taking an action, um, isn't what will they think of me? What if they criticize me? And then I'm worried, am I good enough yet? It's like, what are they going to do to me? So sometimes it's real, real danger. Okay, so... So let's talk about the big blind spot at the third chakra, which makes it tricky for all of us, right? Like I always say, I'm not a writer. I don't write books because I want to. <laughs> I am not. I'm a talker. I can't talk all day. But I put the time and energy into writing unblocked because to me, this is I'm so passionate about teaching these chakras as the lenses and the blind spots in each so that we're not just reading, you know, information or platitudes or mindset stuff. We're really getting to what's going on. So here's a big blind spot for the second chakra is that um, our actions, the actions that we take are the most automatic things that we do. Like next to breathing, the, most of our actions are so automatic, right? We don't have as much control over our actions as we would like to believe. And, and when we find ourselves procrastinating, we really don't know why, but it's part of this automatic behavior. And so, you know, I am always talking to coaches about procrastination as a marketing tool because everyone who procrastinates, it's costing them something, they're mad at themselves, and it's mysterious. Like the reasons that we procrastinate are some of the most my mysterious mysteries, enigmas wrapped in a riddle in the universe, right? I don't know why I do that. Um, we don't know why we avoid boundary setting. We don't know why um, we can't get out of our way and get people get and get things done. We don't know why we've done a ton of healing and we still aren't changing our behavior. And this is where um, the best coaching, the best healing, the technique of tapping, I'm going to talk about that specifically, really hits a snag, really hits a stopping point. So let's let's talk about um, tapping a little bit. Um, I love talking about tapping in several ways, right? One is just the hack. I love to do these little hack videos where you're literally just walking around your house and you're just tapping on a couple of points to turn down the fight or flight in that moment so that you're more clear, more grounded, more calm, you come out of any overwhelm you're in and all of a sudden you will feel more mobilized, right? And so that is one way to use tapping. And another way to use tapping is in a deep dive where I'm really getting underneath and into what is going on and figuring out why I'm avoiding doing this thing. And so when I was first a coach, I was just like, well, this person should be fixed by now. We found all these past traumas. We found all of these reasons that they have fear of public speaking or they weren't marketing themselves or whatever. And then week after week, they still weren't taking action. Strategies don't work. Our accountability doesn't work. Like I said, even investing in ourselves, we hit this snag, we hit this stopping point, and time flies, right? El tiempo va volando. It goes flying by fast, and we start to think, like, I'm stuck here, and I'm watching time goes by. And it's not that painful when we're in our 20s or in our 30s. And then we're having families and it's crazy and career, but it starts to get time flying by, starts to get a little more frustrating when the thing that we want is, it feels really important and we don't actually want to waste any more time. And so, you know, it's important to talk about, you know, for me as someone who's always tried to be a pioneer in, in using the technique of tapping, this is where I got stuck with people. 
because I'm like, why still aren't they doing it? I can't figure anything. I'm in a session. No, we can't figure out why they won't take the action. So let's talk about why do we procrastinate? And then we're going to do, um, we're going to dive into some more tapping, right? Um, to get to some third chakra stuff. So we will do some third chakra tapping today. But let's talk about why do we procrastinate? Um, like, and I'm going to give you some flavors of procrastination and what they really mean. Okay, so those of you who are note takers, right? Get ready, because you're always like, wait, what were the other, what were the things? Okay, so um, what's playing small? A common word that gets thrown around for years and personal growth. I remember one time, uh, someone that was coaching me um, wanted me to go to an event and I had just been at a bunch of things and my daughter was like six years old and I was like, I need to like ground again at home. And so I was going to skip one event and I was told I was playing small. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> but so, but playing small, uh, I was like, that doesn't really resonate, but thank you for trying. Um, is one of those things we throw around a lot, right? And it has been thrown around a lot in the coaching industry. Yeah, you're, you're playing small. Um, so what is playing small? It's procrastinating owning our power, right? Procrastinating being seen that as someone who thinks they're more powerful, who has more power. Um, what about freezing? Freezing is a type of procrastination. What does it do? It ensures a full stop. When I freeze, I ensure a full and complete stop. What about going into perfectionism? It's got to be perfect. What does that do? It ensures that we wait. What about going into self-doubt, like wondering, am I good enough? Am I good enough yet? Right now, I'm not a perfectionist. I just want to be, I just want to do it right. <laughs> Doubting ourselves ensures that we do other things first. I got to get more of these things done first. What about when we go blank? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I should. Blah, 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 blah. That ensures that we cannot move forward. We can't take one action when we're going blank. What about when we get overwhelmed? Like we just get, it's all piling up and now I feel just overwhelmed. Well, when we, sometimes it's, it's, it's because when we hit an emotional point or an emergency, just like when we get sick, it's like, well, now I just have to stop for a while, right? And so it slows things down and gives us a break. When we hit overwhelm, now we have to take a break. Um, and so what about when we go into shame, when we take a little action and then wake up on the, uh, you know, the next day and lay on the couch with this self-hatred that we can't believe has appeared. And I'm saying that because this is the range, right, that I hear from people from one extreme um, to another. I woke up, I took this action, and then I woke up just in shame and hating myself and not being good enough. What does going into shame do? It ensures we start to not only stop progress, but go backwards, to go backwards, right? Shame is a backward spiral. Um, so these are all different ways, but there is a, pur a purpose to procrastination. No matter how you do it, there is a purpose. And that's where the understanding this element of the third chakra, this, this exposure, um, it goes really, really important, is really important to understand. Um, and again, it's like literally one of the mysteries of the universe, especially for people in personal growth. So when you understand procrastination, you are a luminary, like I knight you a luminary right now. So there's a purpose to procrastination, no matter how you do it. And this is what the purpose always is. It is stopping progress towards a future moment of dangerous exposure. Stopping progress towards a future moment of dangerous, and I put that word in there to remind you, your nervous system is like danger, a dangerous uh, moment of dangerous exposure. And I'm, I'm still not done with this sentence <laughs> where 
where you are vulnerable to scrutiny and the pushback of others, a future moment, like exposure means I am now vulnerable. I am standing here naked, right? Naked, totally vulnerable to the scrutiny and the push back. And that means different things for different people. So, um, and, you know, standing there, like what people say, like I felt naked, like exposed, like everyone could just see all of me, my faults, and it's terrifying. And so uh, when I think of this, the word scrutiny, we know what scrutiny means, right? It's like evaluation, but even meaner. We know scrutiny means there's already a critical eye going on, an aggressive eye, a hostile eye, a fault-finding eye. We don't scrutinize things we love, right? You don't say, oh, my darling, let me scrutinize your face <laughs> because your darling knows that something's going to come. Uh, it's not going to be a compliment what comes out next. So I, I kind of push, I put this into two things. Um, if we like slow it down and separate this purpose to procrastination, right? This slowing, this or stopping my progress that like hurtling towards this future moment. Um, and and I'll give you the two things, but it, it kind of doesn't matter what your goal is. This could be a weight loss goal, a fitness goal, and something in your family, your tribe, your coworkers, your friends, it will start to hurdle you towards a future moment where you are going to have to be seen, scrutinized, evaluated, and get the pushback. Even if you're just like, no, I'm not going to have a second, uh, you know, bite of that because I'm, or if it's like, wow, I'm starting to look better or I'm being seen changing my habits. It could be any kind of goal. And when I get to procrastination with people, there could be 10 steps to that goal, right? They will find a certain step in that series of steps where that's where the snag will hit. And it's usually the one that is leading most visibly to this moment of dangerous exposure where we are vulnerable, we are naked to this scrutiny and this pushback. So when I slow it down, there's a searing moment of just naked evaluation, right? There, It's like we, some of us have that, can, can think of an example, right? Where we felt this searing moment of be of like naked evaluation, like everything is stripped away. And sometimes it comes in a shock, right? Like I didn't know this was about to happen to me. Secondly, the pushback, which is the reaction from other people. It can be aggression. Sometimes when people have this, we, we're going to go through this little portal so you we can we can see what pushback we expect. Um, it can be um, shaming, right? The who do you think you are has quite a shaming word in it, has shaming energy in it, um, but it's also quite aggressive. And it can be a level of criticism that is like destroying, right? So there's existential fear. Even when it's someone who's just like, really like, I don't want to be criticized or the other way people say it is, um, you know, if I'm, I'm standing there like an expert, which happens a lot in our experts industry, right? I'm going to be putting myself out there and through my own words and actions, it's going to be revealed that I do think I deserve to stand up there and I do think I have this expertise. And so um, the way people will say it is, I'm afraid they're gonna, they're gonna asking me to prove it, right? Which is where you see, and, and I don't care how, like it can sound kind of innocuous. No, it can be an existential crisis right? I am going to be challenged in a way. Um, and so just, I want you to think of those two words together, destroying criticism, 
destroying criticism. Um, so as we come to third chakra, I want to talk about the, the, it's like a two part problem, right? The first part of the problem is I'm afraid, like my nervous system beyond my conscious ability to control my system. I'm afraid. So there's a big problem. And I have no idea that I'm really afraid. And I don't even know what I'm afraid of. And if when I was a coach, I'm like, um, they're not doing it. So how do I find out what the fear is when they're not doing the thing? Right? It's like, you know, you have fear of elevators or planes, because you try to get on and you feel it. But they're not even getting to the thing. They're just completely avoiding it. So I don't know what, you know, how do we know what we're afraid of? Um, and our mind often does not like or tolerate well the idea that I am like honestly scared, like really afraid. And so it'll it'll spin and tell you other things, right? Our minds are highly developed to take that a fear through the nervous system and mobilize it into, I got to be perfect. I got to do this first. I got to um, do these other things, or I got to, you know, spin, spin, spin. But the second problem is I don't know how or what it would look like to do it differently, to have it go differently than my, than, than in my nightmare. I have no idea what is like a way that I could show up that would be okay in that future moment. I don't know what that even looks like. I don't know what, how I would reply. I don't know what energy I would have. I don't know how to be not selfish, but saying, I, I don't know how to say no without now getting attacked and then I'm overrun. So there's all of this, I don't actually even know what it looks like, right? And so the example that I, I give, it's kind of a rough one, um, is if when you were learning to drive, you only drove around a parking lot and they made you watch movies all the time of the car crashes, right? The crash test dummy. And sometimes they CGI'd you in there. So it looked like you were crashing into that wall. It's only 30 miles an hour, right? There goes the crash test dummy. And so how confident would you feel driving if all you've ever seen is movies of, of car crashes and you've never really gone on a road before? So this is what it's like. It's I um, don't know how to be in that moment any other way except being the, 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 the naked moment of searing scrutiny and then the shame, the existential crushing destruction of my dreams, of who I want to be, of what I hope to be. So how do I do it? How do I live in this future moment without being shamed, without losing? Right. I'm, I'm going to lose anyway. They're going to win without being embarrassed, without being attacked. And so my only way is to say, well, what is my fear telling me? Well, how do I get into a future moment where I'm not going to be shamed or be embarrassed or be attacked? Um, well, one way of doing that is to be so perfect. So I'm going to keep delaying that future moment, right? So perfection, it's like I am going to delay and delay until I'm going to keep doing other things. I'm going to doubt myself first, or I'm going to shame myself first. You're a loser and it's never going to happen. So don't even try. So um, we need to both address the fear, right? Which that was what I was missing is that we could tap all day if I knew what the fear was. But a lot of times we don't because we're just like, I don't know, I'm just not doing it, right? Um, and then we get lots of mindset in our head. People tell us lots of mindset stuff and it's like, yeah, I should believe that, but it doesn't actually help with the fear. And then the second problem is I don't even know what that could look like. I don't even know how I would handle that moment because it's in relationship. And so the solution 
um, at the third chakra is knowing that when you're do working with yourself or you're working with a client, that not only do you have to deal with the pure, raw fear, but you also need a new model, right? So in with, with coaching, I what third chakra, I talk about mentorship. So very, very different than working with the first chakra, which is all about that fear um, and the cruelty that we often visit on ourselves. And, um, or at the second chakra, that's all about moving emotion, moving emotion, moving emotion. So the emotion can feel more balanced, more regulated. At the third chakra, it's about challenging a future moment so that we can see what are we worried about in a loving way, not in a, well, don't worry about that way. No, in a way that we really see tenderly the fear. And then bringing in a model. It's also why I'm so passionate about coaches doing their own third chakra work. Because if if you don't know what the model is either, like if you don't know how it could look or be, then it's hard to help somebody with that model, right? It's hard to help someone move into what's called leadership energy, right? Empowered leadership energy where you are undefended, where you are in your most calm, strategic place, where you are not being, you know, having the rug pulled out from un under you. You can take calm leadership energy that 100% serves you. This is where my no to someone is a yes to me. I know you've heard that expression, right? Would let your nose be a yes to you. This is where my I'm hanging up the phone now is a beautiful leadership act of, of um, kindness to oneself, right? And boundary. This is where um, moving a lot of our reactionary second chakra emotions. So we don't blow up at work and then have a another trauma to deal with. We actually move and honor all of our feelings and can come into hard situations with strategic leadership energy, right? Like I'm going to try to get what I want to get out of this situation, like a, um, you know, like an attorney would, right? Where anything that's thrown at me, I'm like, mm -hmm. anyway, this is what I would like to achieve, right? So um, as you think about your own third chakra, um, yeah, thank you, Anna. <laughs> as you think about your own third chakra, and I appreciate all your comments, you guys, um, you know, that these are hitting the nail on the head for you. Um, and I want you to think about something that you are procrastinating doing because I want to have bring you into this experience right now. Something that you are procrastinating doing and an action like a future part of that procrastination. And I want you to think of it, yeah, in terms of what's the revealing moment, right? And so um, when you say like, hi, Sheila, when you say video, um, it's being seen how on video. Right. Because we could make a video where we're really, you know, playing, you know, it's like, oh, don't, don't I'm just as I like to say, I'm just medium. Um, but what would be what would be in that video? I know for me, um, you know, years ago, way before even tapping into wealth came out, uh, I had a marketing company that I took a loan out to pay them all of this money to help me um, put out a product, my first program. And they told me that they were going to make video. And I said, no, I'm not. Never, ever, ever will I be on video. And it was too late because I already cashed the check. And the reason for me was there will be this moment where people will be looking at me and saying, she must think she's great. She must think she, who does she think she is? And I couldn't, because if I'm in the room with people, 
I can make sure that they all know that I don't think I'm too great and I'm humble too. And I'm just trying to help and I can read people and be like, you know, and then I can relate more. But if it's just on video and I'm speaking as an expert, oh my God, the terror, the nausea, the sickness of like what people are going to think that I think I'm good enough to be on video. Um, and how would I handle that? Yeah. How would I handle that? Yeah. Who gives her the right, right? Who do you think you are even making a video? Um, so great. So you guys are putting some of the things on there. Okay. Um, so I want you to tune into that thing that you need to do. And we're going to do some work around it, some tapping for third chakra. Okay. So we're going to uh, create a future moment that like a, a magical moment that doesn't really exist, right? Well, but but it will help us see what the reaction you are afraid of so you can get really clear about it. And this is classic um, third chakra work. And um, it's, it's because of the nature of the fact that sometimes we don't exactly know what the terror in our first chakra is. And it's not just the doing of it. The, it's the energy of showing up in a way that says, I have a right. I, I am standing here because I intrinsically believe that I have a right to be here, to want this, to speak this way, um, that there is a deserving factor in me that builds on a, I have the right factor in me, right? So I'm now marching forward. Um, so I want you all to take a breath. <sighs> and so we can kind of just swish, uh, switch, swish around and switch out of listening and note taking mode. Um, and we're, I want to go into this visualization. OK, so I want you to take another breath <sighs> and close your eyes because we're going to be visualizing or imagining something. And it just works a little bit better when our eyes are closed. So I want you to imagine that there's like this white movie screen uh, behind your eyelid, right? So just with your eyes closed, there's just like misty white movie screen, just like all the times we've sat, sat in a movie theater and there's just a white screen, nothing's playing yet. And just take another breath and feel the chair supporting you. And now I want you to imagine that there you are standing up on this little stage, maybe only a foot or two higher than other people. And you're standing there. And I want you to fill the space in with all sorts of people, all sorts of people potential customers or clients, but also family members, coworkers, even some people from high school are there. And they've all shown up for this moment. And you, what you are saying as you look at all of them is, I deserve this. I really want this and I deserve this. I really want this. And yeah, I do believe in myself. Yeah, I do think I should be doing this. Yeah, I believe in my expertise. I am an expert. And yeah, I deserve to be doing this. And I just want you to see how are they reacting to you? How are they looking at you? Now, sometimes we see some people like super positive, right? And that's great. You can just be happy those people are there, but you know how our mind works. So I want you to see those in that crowd that are the skeptics, that are 
looking at you with an eye of scrutiny. How are they looking at you? Saying you deserve to be taking this action, doing this thing, going for this thing. How are they looking at you? What are they saying? What do their faces look like? What are they feeling? Do any of them look shocked? Do any of them look angry? Are any of them shaming you, criticizing you, ridiculing you? Even scoffing at someone has aggression in it. Just notice on a scale of one to 10, if 10 is panic attack, how does it feel in you, that version of you getting that reaction from them? And if it's not too intense, right? If it's a little more subtle for you, then what? I, get really clear, like what is the, the words that the skeptic has? What is it specifically they're objecting to? What if, is it a, you must think you're so, or is it a judgment of that is wrong or selfish or narcissistic or whatever? Okay, so um, yeah, and put it on the chat. Um, not paying attention to me. So I want you to notice the cold space when you of, of putting yourself out there and being ignored. Like I don't, they don't care. I don't mean anything. And what would that feel like in that moment? Because that's a, a something to be, oh, that's like an existential, right? Painful moment, even though there's nothingness, right? Um, Judy said, eyes rolling. Boy, there's a lot in that, isn't it? And this is one of those moments, right? Where it's, it's, it's subtle, but it is hostile and it delivers a message, right? And it's, it's ridiculing. Really want you to think about what is ridicule. Yeah, you're a liar, Claire said. And so there is a forward moving, aggressive, hostile energy to say you're a liar. That is very hostile, right? That is someone coming at you, accusing you. Yeah. What makes you think you can do that? Um Awesome. So if you're, if it's good for you, it's good, right? Some of you have done this with me a, a lot, many times, and it starts to get better. Um, ignoring the product I've worked so hard on, crickets. Um, and so what's the feeling of that? I've worked so hard. And now in this moment, the way people are reacting to me is they don't care. Um, materialistic, wow, whoring herself out, some pretty intense language there, Kate, right? Everyone's turning their back on me, rejecting me. So a lot of hostility in there, right? Turning your back on someone is a hostile act. Um, yeah, Craig, right? It's all about your ego. So you are, you know, egoistic, you're, you're a narcissist, you think you're great right? You must think, aren't you full of it, right? Um, you are nothing. Um, you're wasting our time. They think I'm greedy. You're just doing this. So we see all of these different pieces, right? I'm being seen as someone who is greedy. I'm being shamed because the fact that I want that means I'm so I'm going to avoid that moment, right? Yeah, too big for your britches. Don't even bother, right? Shayla, you'll never, stop trying now. Give up now. And so what's underneath that? What's the worldview? What's your paradigm view? Nothing will ever work out. Like, is it you're cursed, right? Or you're, there's something about you that is just never going to work, that is broken. What is it? Yeah, get back in your box, 
Wow. Um, why don't you just have a glass of wine? Yeah, just forget all about this. Um, you don't deserve approval or love. Um, so let's start tapping. Thank you, guys. And I just want you guys to take in the chat, right? Like, these are the, the people on this call are pretty amazing people. Like, this is what lives in amazing, smart, intelligent, educated people when we think about going outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. So let's start tapping. There I am trying to own my power, to say I deserve. Because that will be seen in a future moment. That will be felt by others through my words and actions. And I'm seeing it very clearly, this reaction to my I deserve to be here moment. I deserve to want this. I believe in me moment. Taking a stand moment. And it's really scary. It's really sucky. It is not fun. Yeah, it sucks. People are reacting. And it doesn't feel good. Why did I do this? I should have stayed in my lane. I should not have rocked the boat. This doesn't feel safe. That's really hard. This is what my nervous system expects. This is what my nervous system is trying to protect me from. And it is scary. It is really scary. The feeling of being searingly scrutinized with no way to defend Unless I walk it all back, unless I laugh it all off, unless I go back to where I was before, a future painful moment. No, thank you. And I'm just gonna honor my body and everything it's showing me in this future moment, in this future nightmare and how scary it is. and what it means, what it means about my power, my freedom, my rights, and whether or not I can take action on those rights. I wanna pursue happiness. I honor my nervous system. 
I honor how scary this is. It's okay, I get it. No wonder I'm procrastinating. It's not comfortable. And it doesn't feel good. Okay, and take a breath. And just feel into your body for a second. And I want you to just close your eyes and picture that moment again. Now, sometimes for some people, it'll actually get worse because the tapping turned off the, I'm not feeling anything about it. And all of a sudden there's more fear there. But often we, it, the picture will start to, even in one round of tapping, just look a little bit better because the tapping that we're doing while talking and tuning in is telling our nervous system, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe. Even though we didn't do positive affirmations. So I want you to picture it again and see, yeah, see how does it look now? If it was a 10 before of anxious and fearful, what does it look like now? Has it come down? Does the crowd look a little bit, yeah, a little calmer, like a little more friendly? Sometimes people saying, wow, they're listening. Yeah, they're more positive. Yeah, Catherine said, um, much calmer, more positive, right? Um, the man who said liar is sitting further back and is less aggressive. So you see how we're literally changing the nervous system's interpretation of this future moment that you've been avoiding. So um, yeah, you want to see where it is for you. Um, more tapping could be needed, right? More tapping needed around this. But do you see how important this is? Because this is the stopping point, right? But now what I want to shift and do is just give you a different model. Because often we can tap and tap and tap, but then when that moment comes, it's like, but aren't I being kind of egotistical? Like, aren't I being a little bit, aren't I? I don't know how to do it in a way that's going to feel lovely. Okay. So in this next part, I want you to take a breath and close your eyes again. And I want you to see yourself up there. And we're going to change since this is a magical doorway to a moment that has never happened. Um, we can change it any way we want. So I want you to first imagine that someone who really loves you and believes in you with all of their heart, like so solid, like a rock, steps up on that stage behind you and puts their hand on your shoulder. And they're like, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> or whatever that person would say to you. Excuse my French, right? You're awesome. You got this. And just see that through their hand on your shoulder, you now feel not only your first chakra, your solid body standing on the floor, but you feel them as a pillar, a rock, an oak tree standing with you. Take a breath. And see yourself steadied, more solid. See yourself take a big breath. Now it's like you're seeing yourself in that moment. Take a big breath. <sighs> and then I want you to see yourself looking around and seeing the people who are very skeptical or mean and see yourself just saying like, wow, that was harsh. expressing in that moment, wow, okay, that was harsh. And I want you to see yourself and just saying that fun word, 
Awkward. That was harsh. Ooh, that was awkward. Oh, okay. So just see yourself react in that way for a minute. And then take that breath and get your bearings and thank your friend for stepping up. Let them let them go back into the crowd. And now I want you to see yourself up there saying, I really do want this. And I really do care. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. My goodness, I make mistakes all the time. And I know what I'm talking about in this. I really care about this. I'm really interested in this. This is my passion. Or I don't know what to tell you. I just really want this. And I've waited. And I feel like it's my time. And I'm definitely not perfect. And I don't have all the answers. But I'm really good at this. Really passionate about this. And I give all of you permission. See yourself there, yourself there suddenly putting your arms wide. Open heart wide. And I give you all permission to go after what you want, to believe in your dreams, to honor yourself as awesome, but never perfect. And ooh, it's scary up here. And I'm doing it, look at me. <laughs> inside voice. Look at me. I'm doing it. Oh my gosh. This is so scary. Look at these people. And see yourself up there. Nod to the crowd and say, yeah, this is a little scary to put myself up here. And I'm really passionate about it. I give you all permission today to believe in yourselves more, to value yourselves more, to feel that right. And I really do care about this. And I really do want to do it. And this really is my time. I give you permission to disagree. As a matter of fact, I give you permission to not be interested in what I'm saying at all. This is not a court ordered program. You may go. And for those of you who are inspired or supportive, I'm so grateful for this little moment. Okay, and take a breath. <gasps> and now just imagine that your third chakra in this picture, this visualization, the middle of your body is like this beautiful sun, bright yellow sun, like beaming out through all of your pores for everyone to see. This beautiful undefended self. I am not perfect and I probably will mistakes, make more mistakes and... I'm always growing and learning and I'm excited. See that big, beautiful energy inspire. Maybe not everybody, but some people in the room. Because it is very uncommon to see someone enthusiastically being themselves without having to be perfect, 
without having to put on airs, without worrying about being this or being that, but enthusiastically being who they are. Okay, come on back, take a breath. <sighs> And so that's what I mean by um, a new model, right? And it wasn't specific, right? Um, as far, but there were some specifics in there of this is what it can look like to be putting yourself out there in a way that if someone says, I know you, you're not perfect, you would go, well, that's true. Thank goodness I'm human. That you have a model, a way to to be in a moment and and be able to be all of who you are, but focus again on I'm enthusiastic, I'm passionate, I'm, this is my time. Yeah. Yes, perfectionism does block the third chakra. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really just fear. It's really just fear spinning. Um, and it says, I can't take the action or there's only certain actions I can take and they're all around improving till I'm perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is very uncommon to see someone who's enthusiastically being themselves <laughs> and it's, you know, it's that old Wayne Dyer, he'd say, uh, quote, he'd say, you know, uh, be yourself cause everyone else is taken. I assume that he started that. I don't know if he got that from somewhere else. Um, but it is easier to show up in a way that is, I am not perfect and I, I will get stumped. I will trip over my feet. I will make the most awkward mistakes. And I'm also really good at this. Right? I also know what I'm talking about and I'm gonna keep improving. And go ahead and stump me. I will say, you stumped me there. And, you know, I'm going to keep growing. And so, yeah. So how does the pic How did the picture look at the end? Susan said the vibe has become much more friendly. Yeah. Um, and it kind of goes back to something I was saying about why I couldn't make video. Because I couldn't tolerate someone um, just being like, ugh can't stand the sound of her voice. And so this ability to say, I'm not for everyone, right? Like if you don't vibe with me, like go with grace, right? No problem. So uh, for me, that was another sort of mentorship moment that was a shift like i didn't know how to not be to try to be as a middle child of eight like every <laughs> you want to be in the middle flexible like i'm going to change myself 10 different times so that everybody likes me and so the ability to to give people permission to not resonate with you that's okay we can agree to disagree i remember when i heard that expression in my 20s and 30s i was like no, I will make sure that we agree by me changing myself. I will never let you think that I disagree uh, because that was too dangerous in my system. Right? Um, you're welcome, Lisa. <laughs> um, yeah, I was figured that. Uh, I was figured that that wasn't Wayne Dyer. Thank you, Shadi. Yeah, be yourself. Everyone else was taken was Oscar Wilde, who was tried in court for being gay. Yeah, when homosexuality was dangerous. Like, how dare you be yourself? Um, awesome. My feet were rooted to the earth and I was shining light. Um, I noticed, um, Claudia said, I noticed people leaving after the visualization and then it was a smaller group. Great, right? And so our, our um, I have you do that, like show up with just random people in that visualization and, and be standing there in this energy of, I think I'm pretty great. Like I, I think I deserve this right now. And that's the part we have to put into the future action to find out because that's what we're afraid people are gonna react to. 
right? Because nobody would have a problem if you got up there and said, I'm going to give you guys all my money and all of my time for free. And I'm not going to think I'm good at all. I am going to think that I'm just a piece of crap, right? Isn't that great? Everybody's like, yeah, this is going to work for us, right? And so it's the um, the, the the thing that breaks out of the comfort zone is the standing in one's self-belief. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Remember, we have one more live class together. It's for the fourth chakra. It's a doozy. And that will be on Thursday. And for those of you that are coaches, um, remember that you'll start to see emails this week inviting you to my four-part um, training series on using the chakras in a more intuitive way to help your clients, right? To learn the secrets of the chakras. Um, Cause I have 12 portals that we use to get to um, uh, healing and unblocking the energy in the chakras. Those training classes are starting, I believe next week. So you'll start to see invitations to sign up for that separate series. Okay. Awesome. And I'll see you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Bethany. Yeah. The four part training series. Oh, we already have the link for that. If you want to uh, get in and make sure that you're registered for that. Thank you, Jackie, for ordering my book. Those of you who have unblocked, please go on Amazon, please. And do an honest review. Um, I so appreciate it. I, I check all the time and I read them and then I send love vibes uh, to anyone who takes the time. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.